everyone, and welcome to our latest installment of Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long, and excited to welcome our guest, 27-year-old offensive lineman who the Rams acquired via trade just before the start of this 2023 season. Kevin Dotson is with us, and my first chance to speak with you, Kevin. Thank you for spending part of your Monday with us. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> All right, last stop before you're off day, one more media request. This is our player podcast. We're going to talk a little bit about last week, mm-hmm. get into the matchup ahead against Arizona, but it's mostly about you, okay? Yeah. Let's start with the uh, Eagles' disappointment. How do you uh, digest what happened against Philadelphia in Week 5? Um, you know, I, f- I say overall we we had the opportunities to make it that game. Uh, we know what we can do. And, you know, the only thing disappointing about it is not being at our full potential. You know, we know if, if all the things that we know could hit, the things that we talked about during the week hit, uh, that game is way different. It's way different. So you don't want to live in the past, but as long as you know that this is a possibility, it'll always keep you, you know, moving forward. It's got to be infuriating as an offensive player to be sidelined for 38 minutes of Eagles possession, right? Just kind of chomping at the bit, waiting for your turn. And what'd you end up with? Only 55 plays? Like, that's not enough for an offense, I imagine. Uh, I would say for me, like it started at the beginning of the game when we didn't get the ball first and stuff like that. I, I'm just like, it's getting in my heart. I'm, I'm like, my heart is beating. I'm just like, I'm ready to just get my first hit on somebody so I can get these butterflies out. Cause right. like you try to get it out before the game, you try to yell, you try to just like big up yourself. But until you get that first contact, it's it's not going. It's just gonna sit in your stomach until you get that first hit. So I, I'd rather be out there get our defense the time to just you Mm -hmm. know really charge up and be able to go out and go 100 percent. but you know it's never 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 how you plan it whatever was pent up i saw you dump an eagle in the fourth quarter there after a nice game you know what i'm talking about yeah but (laughs) no penalty though yeah but i just you can't do that to me man my girl in the stand i can't i can't just let you push me in the back of the head i come on i gotta i gotta retaliate i'm trying not to but it's going to happen sometimes. <laughs> One thing I noticed, uh, and I think you talked about this last week with our media too, is stepping in to make two starts here at right guard the last couple of weeks. You're in charge of the silent count operation, right? You look like the relay man from Matthew Stafford in the shotgun to Coleman Shelton. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, so walk me through that. Like if I'm Coleman, you're at right guard. Like how does that go? And what kind of stress does it put on you? Uh, When I first got here, I thought it would put more stress on me just because I'm like, oh man, I'm in, I'm in charge of everything. Like, this, if I don't do anything, I'm pretty much the center. So they're not going to snap unless I do something. So when I first got here, I was kind of confused on, not even confused, I was just, I guess, worried that I was going to mess it up. But now that I've been doing it for a little bit, it, it's low-key a benefit to me because the play don't start until I'm ready. <laughs> so when, I, when, I'm, when I'm there, I can look back, take my time, look up, boom, Look back again, diagnose who I'm supposed to be going to. All right. Don't have to go fast. Don't have to go too fast. As soon as I'm ready, all right, now I can go. So it's a, it's that little hand gesture. Yeah. And that's that's a benefit to me, I think. It just being able we not going till I <laughs> till me, till I feel comfortable enough to say, uh, okay, okay. And now I'll go. Yeah. You ever think about changing the play, like doing an audible? Nah, I would never do that. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna do exactly what Stafford say. Uh, he uh, all he wants is consistency in that snap, in that snap count. You should work in like a little turbo set though. Oh, no, never. <laughs> what, would it, what would it sound like? You want to give us your cadence? I'm I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just going. If he say turbo, okay. <laughs> we just <laughs> when I say I listen to no matter what he says, I'm doing it. I don't care if he tell me to do a backflip on this. I'm like, you sure? And I'm gonna try to hit the backflip. So whatever the quarterback say. Even whenever, whatever the center say, I'm I'm going 100. percent They call it a silent count for a reason, yeah. right? <laughs> Tell you, not for you to get your uh, voice in there. Yeah, that all. What is Stafford like in the huddle? He's a, he's 100 percent locked in. Like you can see it in his eyes. It's like just it's like his eyes low key, a little like wide. Just like he's 100 percent in, focused, trying to tell you to play. Get it up, get it up, get it up. Then he gets us out of there, and. I feel, I feel like he keeps the same intensity the entire game. It's not like any joking, none of that, nothing like that. It's just we in there, we in there, we in there. He'll, he'll joke after the game, something like that. But 
during the game, he's 100 percent in. What's it been about six weeks or so? Do you feel like you're fluent in Sean McVay in Los Angeles Rams? I feel like I feel like it's uh, a easy culture to kind of get behind. So um, I definitely like like where his headspace is, like in meetings and stuff like that. Him and um, Mike T are pretty much polar opposites overall, but they get pretty much the same um, player feedback when it comes to like being a player coach or being somebody because people say player coach but they think it's like going easy on the players Mm -hmm. and the players just like that it's more like he can talk to you uh he can talk to you in a way that gets you pumped up um mike t he kind of lives off of a little bit more negativity but he'll tell you that like he he'll live he loves to uh uh, live off that negative uh, energy, but Sean a little more, more positive, more. All right, we we got this, we got this, we can do this, and uh, I think it gets two different types of uh, energy out of people. Some people, for Mike T, you say it's just giving you. He knows you can do better, and it's just like more of like, ah, man, I got to get it right because I know he know I can do it, and he's showing me the plays that I messed up on, like. Man, I could do this. Mm. I don't know why I'm messing up. I need to lock in. Sean, you like, man, I could do this. He just showed me a good play I did, and I can I know I could do this. He showed me my play. I can keep this going. And it's just two different, you know, uh ways of doing it, I guess. That was really well said. I'm glad you brought it up. It was on my list here. How would you compare Sean and Mike? Because I don't know if you know this. But Coach McVeigh, I think, really looks up to Coach Tomlin. Like in the coaching fraternity, he's someone that I think Mike T is. Uh, he's definitely a figure in the coaching. Um, so I don't know what you call it. Just like in the fraternity, like you mm-hmm. said, he is. His character and all those type of things are something that really has him known across the the entire league. Even if you didn't play for him, if you played for him once. You can go to another team and talk about him because he just you never felt bad. He never did anything to to make you feel negative. Even if he said negative stuff about you, you didn't you didn't take it as negative because you know what he's on what he means when he says it. He's saying it with his heart. He's telling you exactly what you need to hear. He's not going to sugarcoat it. And that's something I like about it. How much does it matter to you? And do you think it impacts results on Sunday to have a figure like that in front of your team room? Whether it's here on a Monday, like in a team meeting, pregame, halftime locker room, like those two have gotten consistent results at the highest level of this sport and they have longevity to go along with it. Like, what do you think that secret sauce is? I think being able to be, it's kind of crazy because like in college, I took the class of like public speaking and I really think being able to make a speech off the the top of your head that makes sense and actually goes with what the theme of the day is, like Coach T, he would always have like if you sat in there and just every morning we have a um, a speech that is just like man, everything he said made sense, and not just in football. So once you do that, like I believe everything he's saying, I don't. I don't feel, believe that he's blowing smoke on me like you just I believe every word he says and I should go in and work as hard as I believe I can work I think Sean does the same thing but just in a positive spin you gonna say you can you can do this backflip doesn't no he gonna be like I've seen you do this B block and we gonna show a play and look you killed him on this B block now I'm like man I can hit this mm-hmm. I know I can hit this he just showed me I can hit this and I just I just I like that energy too well, it's great to get to know you a little bit, and I hope you feel welcome here in Los oh, yeah. Angeles and California. Yeah. You were telling me before we started, like, other than one flight for an NFL symposium earlier in your career, you'd never been to the West Coast? I, I never. Texas was, like, the farthest west. So not even playing for the Steelers making any West Coast trips? Always was hurt or something like that. So my rookie year, I wasn't traveling yet. I said they went. And then the next year, I played for, like, nine weeks, then got hurt. They were about to go play West Coast. I got hurt. Mm. And then last year, we just didn't play anything. They, uh, We didn't play anybody in the West. Well, I know it's not tourism, right? It's no, work. No. Um, and I wonder, what's the experience like getting traded? Like, I think that's something maybe we don't talk about often enough, to be a person, a professional, and have someone come to you and say, hey, pack your bags. 
Yeah, it was pretty fast. Um, I pretty much knew it, it, it was probably going to happen because uh, just the signings that they had. Um, but one day after a practice, after like the last practice, they were just like, my agent called me. Uh, somebody might be interested in you. I was like, okay. And then like four hours later, hey, you ready to make this happen? Wait, wait, hold up. I, the Rams want you. So like right now, like, yeah, probably leave in the morning. It was a pretty fast process. As soon as I got here, get all MRIs and stuff like that, get everything ready. They were pretty um, accepting when I first got here. And uh, it was one of those things where you think I haven't been here and I didn't get to do OTAs. I didn't get to install plays. And you're just thinking it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But my coaches came with me like the next day. We went through all, all the plays, and um, we recognized that I pretty much understood the plays already. So it was just the fact that I haven't been here, that I had to get that cohesion with my the people next to me. And um, I think that's what's helping now. You mentioned the word cohesion. I did think about you in the middle of – Sunday's game against Philadelphia because you finally settle in. You're in the starting lineup. Next thing you know, you got a new center next to you, right? Brian Allen steps in for Coleman for a bit. Then, bam, you got a new right tackle tackle on your other shoulder. How'd you weather that? Oh, man, it was because I, I was already with them for those three weeks, uh, four weeks I wasn't playing. Oh, good point. Yeah, I was playing practice squad with them, so I already know how they play. Mm-hmm. And B.A. is awesome. He's an awesome uh, center. Uh, definitely start somewhere already. Uh, and I already played with Warren um, in in, uh, in practice, so right. I understood how they play and how I need to come off uh, differently. Back to the trade for a second. Did you know anyone in this building when you showed up? Uh, Tree. Tremaine Tree, uh, Yeah, Tremaine Angel. And um, we trained together and, uh, in Dallas during okay. the off season. He was the only person I knew out here, and because uh, <laughs> I want to, unless you played the sport or been involved in a situation like this, what to compare it to? Like maybe changing schools or changing jobs. Yes, yeah, it's, like, it's like it would be like changing high schools, senior year, and you going to another state. Like nobody is. You might have a cousin right over there, and y'all not really in there like that. But I know you. We good. Tree me. We friends. So that's a little closer, but. Being away from everybody, not even close to the family, not close to anybody that you could like, you know, just be around like that. Because you're from Louisiana. Yeah, I'm from Louisiana, so you didn't go to a small school, but it's not like you're. It's, you got, UL is pretty small. It's just okay, but it's, it's not LSU where you might have connections throughout. Yeah, the league you, you don't or, you don't get that many connections. Right. Um, we had a few people go to the league, but y'all had uh, Calais. He was on running back. Yep, but he's not here, so. Just out here now. I'd love to get your perspective on the rookie left guard, Steve Avila. Oh, man. He's, and what impression he's made on you and based on what you've seen from him, like how high can this young man's ceiling be? I, I see him being a, a, a great for the, for the Rams. Being young right now, but he's very coachable. He's very, um, say, malleable <laughs> when it comes to uh, you telling him something and him taking it to the field, uh, him being – confident in what you tell him that he maybe need to do um in the next drive tell him oh i need to th- you need to throw that inside hand next time he gonna throw the inside hand the next time so i think if he can keep that up and uh probably just really just rookie it's hard to be 100 percent confident as a rookie um so i said the more his confidence go up i think you'll see better and better plays when he walks into the offensive line room, does he have to like stagger himself and come in sideways, or can he walk straight through? He's definitely a big guy. He, he way bigger than I, I thought when I first uh, heard of him. But I think I think he'll probably even slim down a little more and just just keep keep it coming. I love the way the jersey fits him. Yeah, man. It, it looks just right. <laughs> that's, that's how offensive line is supposed to be built. That's how they right. Say it. That's right. Okay, so the Steelers will be here in less than two weeks, and I'm always reluctant to like talk about a game that's not this Sunday, but given the circumstance, you happen to be sitting down at a decent time. Do you circle that one? Are you anticipating it? Any idea what your emotions will be like? I'm, I have no, uh, you know, ill will towards it. So, I mean, it's not really a circle game for me. I understand that the game is the game. Um, the NFL is a business. 
They took the best opportunity they could with what they had. They got a guard that was like the number one guard uh, free agent. So it's like you can't blame them for it. And I wouldn't say I had a down year last year, but I guess it was enough to to have doubt. I'm still going to play hard. Right. I'm not going to go soft on it because I know them. I'm cool with everybody on the, on the team, but uh, they understand – it's a game too, and I'm gonna go hard. And they've seen me at practice go hard, so they don't expect me to let up on them. Sounds like one of those deals that hopefully is good for all sides, yeah, right? It, like it's more like Rams got better. My brothers, yeah. maybe you yeah. get an opportunity that allows you to amplify your career and yeah. to take that next step. Okay, now we can lock in on the next opponent. The <laughs> Arizona Cardinals are first. Very important game as part of uh, a three-game homestand here at SoFi Stadium. First, let me do a little roster check. You did overlap with James Conner for a year in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And Joshua Dobbs, too? Yeah. Is, is someone that you connect with? Okay, sorry to see that James got hurt uh, last week for the Cardinals, but looking forward to seeing seeing Dobbs. Any thoughts so far? I know it's early in the week in terms of what the Rams can do to have more success, especially offensively against Arizona. I just know Josh Dobbs, and I know how smart he is overall. He was always on the sideline giving advice, even to starters, so – that he was always respected in Pittsburgh uh, media and in the locker room. Uh, so I understand that he can be, he can get things done. Uh, haven't really looked too much into the defense, but I know that if they can keep up with the team they've been, you know, at least in battles with. Sure. So I never take anybody for granted. Uh, let me allow uh, Dobbs to be our transition then to our closing segment here on Rams Revealed, which is a segment we call three and out. We do it each week. Uh, questions get a little bit looser here, but the bit is if you get them all right, I'll make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf. You up for it? What type of question are we talking about? I'm talking about questions with no wrong answers. Okay, okay. So Dobbs majored in aerospace engineering at Tennessee and has interned at NASA. My question for you, if you were offered a spot on a spaceship, would you no. take it? <laughs> no, you didn't even not let me enough. finish. You are not an it's astronaut. Just, it's too much it's too much too much danger involved, too many possibilities of things happening wrong. Even if I get to the moon, I'm scared of a leak or something just happening. I'm just I'm too paranoid to do it. Zero gravity would be nice, though, right? Uh, For an offensive just lineman. Just imagine you hear one little sound, like a like a ting, like just one screw just came loose. They 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 accounted for that, but I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, I feel like I just died when I heard that. Plus the leg room. I mean, that's got to be problematic. <laughs> All right, question number two on three and out. True or false? You have a twin brother. True. Tell me about Kenny. Hey, he's my my number one guy. He's been my 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 best friend since day one um we catch up every day every chance we get a chance he just had a son so i'm my uncle oh congratulations yeah i think a lot of times i wish he would have been if he would have went to my school because he went to a, a smaller school than me uh but if he would have went to my school he'll be in the league now he played defense in college he played right defensive you end. played offense and you both played for your father as preps in, in, in high school middle school Really, little league. Any any time my dad could coach, he was coaching us. Uh, we would always watch film with him. We we're probably the only kids watching film of our of ourselves in little league. He was he's always been a high school coach. Uh, so we've been around football since first grade. My dad was a principal too. So there's no what detention looked like. Uh, uh, there was no chance of me getting in <laughs> trouble. So I was uh, people tease you or well not tease you but just. Like, man, I wish my parents were, you know, the principal. I can get away with stuff. Oh, you can't. Like, the chances that the teachers were giving the uh, the kids in our school, I didn't get that chance. If I get a, if I get messed up or I talk too much, front office, hey, uh, Mr. Dodson, can you? Oh. <laughs> I can't. I, I don't get away with anything. They know who to so, call. So, uh, it was, I guess it was a good thing overall because yeah. I always had good grades and stuff like that. So, and my dad is probably my number one supporter so it's always been love with him your family regulars at SoFi oh yeah looking forward to having them many times in Englewood yeah. all right final question this has been a great conversation uh first I know you're from the bigger Baton Rouge area but can you tell me the name of your hometown specifically Plaquemine Plaquemine much easier to pronounce than it looks yeah. on paper <laughs> um can you design for us here the quintessential Bayou menu for foodies out there what's your <sighs> plate looking like for me, I'm a boudin guy. I don't know if a lot of people know about boudin. It's like a 
it's a sausage casing with like rice and things that they they've mixed in there and you can make so many different varieties of it like crawfish they have um pork beef they got fried boudin balls like dirty rice uh jambalaya everything fried <laughs> it's never never healthy that's one thing i can say it's never healthy and uh i wouldn't have it any other way really i keep it unhealthy as possible <laughs> i don't eat it often so i'll take it as i can uh thank you for stopping by have a great off day and an even better week ahead uh, week six against the arizona cardinals we're glad to have you kevin and thanks for sharing some of your story with our audience yes, all right for kevin dotson i'm jb long what a great installment of rams review Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our videos.